So with me now is Margaret Hobson. Margaret, what's your recollection of World War II? Well, I was six when the war started. Oh, um, yes, I, I, I remember it. And um, I had lived in Ardwick then, which is the inner city, so we got plenty of bombing there. And um, I can remember in the big blitz that they've talked about before 1941, right facing my house was a, a garage which was bombed and we came back we used to have to go to the shelters down in a in a school where they'd um, reinforce the cloakrooms as um, shelters and so whenever the sirens went you used to blanket round you gas mask and then we'd have to go this walk to this school which was a good 10 minutes walk for us say and stay there the night and come back the next day. Well, when we came back the next day, there wasn't a window left in the house, not a door would lock or anything like that. So we had to go and live with my grandma for oh. about six weeks. And of course, the first night we go there, she lived near a, a railway crossings, oh, which was dear. a railway junction. And there was a big bombing there then, that was in Collier's. Going to school then at, um, not my school, St Malachy's, which was interesting because it was run by nuns. And um, another time when we had a bombing, my mother used to bring the mattress down and she'd have it in the front room, as we called it. And with the th my three, my brother and sister and I would be down there. And my brother's saying, it's raining in on me, it's raining. And it was glass from the windows <laughs> that was coming down on him. He thought it was raining on him, you know. And, um, ooh, and the, the gentleman talked about the rationing before. And he said about potatoes. Now, I can remember that there was a shortage at one time of potatoes. And if they, they got to know there was a greengrocer that had some, and mother used to say, go and get in the queue and get some potatoes. Oh, mum, I don't like just going and asking for potatoes. Oh, well, all right, get a Swede, she'd say. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that I had some, something else. I didn't like to go and just ask for whatever was hard to get hold of. And, um, and milk. She had, um, it was an outdoor beer license, but the lady sold milk and then we used to go in and we'd go down, go, she knew that what we're going for and she'd go under the counter and we had our milk delivered, go under the counter and bring us extra milk. So my mother used to say, um, she said to my brother one time, go to Rosie Blythe's, what for? For the, for, um, what did you call it? The cow juice. <laughs> <laughs> the cow juice. So he went back. He went there and then he, he, he goes in and asks for this. And when he came home, he said, Mum, why didn't you tell me it was milk you wanted? <laughs> <laughs> As a little boy, he'd gone in and asked for the cow and juice. He felt a fool. Yeah, he'd gone in and asked for the cow juice. I was evacuated for the whole of two months um, to Congleton. Oh. And I, and, I was the eldest, so I, I had to go. My sister wasn't to go, she was younger. And my father goes, and he, and he saw where I was, and there was a canal just at the bottom of the garden. So after two months, he comes to visit me, and he said, right, that's you coming home. <laughs> so I was only there for two months, and he brought me home, you know, and I was at home then the rest of the time. Is that because he was afraid of you going in the canal? Is that, that <laughs> I think so. I think so. I mean, he wasn't bothered about the bombing, but he didn't want me to go in the canal. Hey, Mark, yeah. did you ever have to drink the dry milk and the dry eggs? Well, do you know, my mother was a... She, was, she, was, she really was... When I think of the, the meals that she made and the, the, the baking she did and using the dried milk and dried eggs. Yes. Yeah. Dried eggs, I mean, she did some really nice baking. And, um, yeah, and, and we talked about the spam and that, and corned beef, because it was all in tins, but, do you know, I, di I didn't like potato ash. She used to make potato ash with the corn, tins of corned beef. And yeah, we still make that. And, you know, we had, when we had, we had the first time we had it with real meat afterwards, we didn't like it. It's <laughs> <laughs> not market. My mum still makes that now. Yeah, I love it's it. It's lovely, yeah. And, and we said, I don't like it with real meat. <laughs> I didn't like it. We'd got so used to the corned meat having the, the, 
potato after with that. It was lovely. Um, uh, so when you started work, were you what? what oh, I, I didn't. I, I was fourteen when I came to live in Windsor. So I mean, you know, I was. I had started work then until I came to live up here. We came up here in 1947, so I've been here 70 years next month. And um, 1947, uh, so we, you know, we had a couple of years after the war, still down in Arbury. And we were sent here then because, I mean, it was only two up, two down. And there was the, the three children, you know, mixed race mixed children and um, we got the house here and I stayed on at school and I carried on going because in my father's eyes he said well she's got to get used to travelling when she starts work so she can carry on so I went every day down back down to Ardwick to go to school from here and then I used to have to wait walk to the Altrincham Road to get the 99 bus that was the nearest bus to there, into town and then out of town, you know. Well, I say out of town, I mean, I can remember when, when it, it was about Hayton, I think, on the bus into town from where I lived in Arbrick. And I'd say, um, if I wanted to go in there, and I'd say, can I have a hate? You can walk. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hate for the bus, you can walk. Won't do you any harm, you know. I mean, it was not all that far for us to walk, but still it's there. Uh, as children, it seemed hey. forever. You know. How did it feel during the war? With the air raid sirens and the bombs raining well, down? Well, I scared? can remember, yeah. No, not scared in that sense, but what I didn't like was when we were in bed and you could hear the planes yes. going over. Oh. There were the old prop planes mm. and it was that droning yeah, drone. there. Yeah. And you'd hear them. Yeah. And I can remember my sister and I were shared the bed and we're yeah. saying, Please God, let it go over. Please God, let it go Aww. over. Please God, let. And we'd hear it going, it and then, oh, it's yeah. going over. That it did stop while it was there because I mean, when they came down, they just yeah. that was it. And of course, as soon as the air raid wardens went, you were, as I say, out of bed and down to this school, Ross Place School. Oh, the kids say, put that blooming light out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was no such. Th I mean, it was. You had your black eyes. Yeah. There was no, you know, I remember what this time when the garage was uh, bomb facing us. Well, when the, the, my father was an ARP warden and they were coming back and you could hear all of them swearing and going on because all the telegraph wires and the wires were all down and everybody was getting t tangled in the wires, oh, you dear. know, the things that came. But one thing was, it shows how scared we were. We couldn't wait for them the next day after after the rain to go collecting shrapnel. Oh, <laughs> yes. We used to go with it. We used to go collecting shrapnel, and then if anybody had a nice big piece of shrapnel, you were doing swaps. <laughs> and there, uh, oh, you've got a bigger piece than I've got. You know, oh, yeah. amazing. The, the, the things. Well, my, I my sister, the eldest one, she said, "I am not frightened over those bombs at all. I'm going to bed." And actually, move and she moved downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was sad. Uh, what did you say? I thought you weren't frightened. Well, we used to say, because she was the eldest, you know. But they were after the race course where all the soldiers were, you see. Uh, that's fantastic, Margaret. Thank you very much, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.